you know, I want to dive right into the idea of flow. I love tension and, and I really got into the idea of tension years ago because what is stepping into tension does what? You can't grow without tension. You can't grow without stress. And everybody's trying to get away from stress. Everybody get that? Like if you got all the stress out of your life, you would just lay on a couch all day and do nothing. Okay. And that would still have, you'd still have gravity because without the gravity, your bones would atrophy and die. So if you don't stress your body, you don't stress your mind, you can't grow. How are you going to learn a foreign language without stressing your mind? How are you going to build muscles without going to the gym and stressing your body? Yet, what does the world tell you all the time? Get rid of the stress, get rid of the tension. This is just a quick overview uh, so we can move towards flow and understanding what flow is. So we've got it backwards a little bit. Uh, who's watched the Kelly McGonigal video, uh, How to Make Stress Your Friend? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, for all of you that haven't watched that, put it into YouTube tonight and look it up. How to Make Stress Your Friend by Kelly McGonigal. And uh, that video will change your mind about stress. The gist of it is, is that Ke Kelly McGonigal is a health psychologist. And she was telling her clients for her whole life, get stress out of your life. It's bad for you. It's going to kill you. And then she saw a study and the study, uh, and I might have these numbers a little off, check the video to, to verify them. The study st uh, was the study of about, I think 30,000 people over eight years. And what they noticed, and they all, first off, they asked them two questions. How much stress do you have in your life? Low, medium, or high? And do you think stress is good for you? Or do you think stress is bad for you? And at the end of the eight years, two groups stood out. The group that said stress was bad for them and they had a lot of stress had the most sicknesses, most illnesses, most deaths. So yeah, stress is bad for you. Look at this. But then the group that said, thought stress was good for them and had high stress had the greatest success, the best health, and had the best, most gains. So is stress really bad for you? It depends on how you see the stress. If you have a really healthy relationship to stress, stress will grow you. It'll propel you to, to amazing heights. People like Elon Musk are under massive amounts of stress, right? Richard Branson's under massive amounts of stress, yet they thrive in it. They eat it for lunch. It feeds their body. Whereas other people get just a little bit of stress. They get a bill in the mail that's unpaid and they freak the fuck out and they lose their mind, right? They get a ding on their credit and they're like, oh my God, my life's ruined. And that's only, the only difference between those two people is a psychological perception. It's, it's just the perception of stress. So learning how to create a, to, to manage stress and, and create a healthy relationship to stress is really important. Now, I'm not saying go out and get under the maximum amount of stress possible to, to lift the most tension possible. If you went to the gym and you lift, uh, a, 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 if you lifted double your personal best all at once, you probably hurt yourself. It's too much stress, right? Like, let's say you can only bench press 135 pounds and you put 200 on the bar. What, what the fuck's going to happen? It's not going to be pretty. So then you go, see, stress is bad for me. That's not true. You didn't, you didn't find the right balance of stress for you. The, one, the amount that wakes you up and makes you feel alive, makes you hungry for more. Wakes your, who, who's gone to the gym before and after you're over, you're like, you just feel endorphins and you're pumped and you're ready to move. And, and that's the type of stress we're talking about. When you hit that sweet spot, you feel alive. And why is that? Because stress, tension, I'm gonna start switching the word attention, is the gateway to flow. It's the gateway to flow states. Without tension, you're not gonna hit flow state. Okay? And so when you avoid tension altogether and you get it out of your life, those people have the least amount of flow in their life. Now, does everybody in here understand what I mean by flow state? Anybody not? Anybody confused by the idea? As, as, have, have you ever done something, for the ones that aren't, for everybody, have you ever done something in your life where you go out to do it and you, you hit this state where it seems like you can do anything. Everything is just working. Like you're walking down the street. Let's say you're walking down the street through the city of New York and there's a million people for all you New Yorkers. And it seems like everybody's just getting out of your way. They'll be hitting every green light. You're, or maybe you're running and you're just moving and flowing and it feels like your body's floating. Or you're uh, 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 
uh, you're playing a sport and you're just like, everything's working for you that day, whether it's baseball or football. Who's had that experience with something, right? Okay, good. It could also be with writing. It could be with coding. There's coders out there that get in front of the computer and they go into a trance and it's just like their body goes. Rrr. There's writers that'll turn out a book in one night, a best-selling book in one night, and it just comes through them. There's artists that get on stage and they don't think. Their body just flows and the words come out of their mouth. And uh, who's had that experience with creativity? Not, not sports, but something more of a academic profession. Okay. They actually find out, they thought that they would find more people in flow states in physical activity when they went to do the deeper studies, but they actually realized that, they, that more people go in flow states with more academic and artistic activities. And they, it just stands out more in sports. It stands out more in, you know, because you see a guy doing a, a backflip on a motorcycle, which they used to think was impossible. And now people do it and they're like, that stands out in people's minds. That's like fucking crazy, right? But it takes flow state to reach the skill level to do that. If you don't go into flow, you'll probably kill yourself. And that's, that's why we have to hit these flow states. Now, I talk about this because the, in socialization, really good social skills are flow states. Oh, by the way, uh, everybody, almost everybody on the planet uh, pretty much everybody on the planet does hit flow state and the average person that doesn't hit flow state a lot hits it about 5% of the time. Some level of flow state and there's varying degrees of flow state. There's a light flow state to, to where you feel like Superman, where you feel like you can do the impossible. Now, who here goes out and socializes or goes to bars and flirts and meets strangers and has a good time and meets girls? Raise your hand. Okay. Have any of you ever hit a flow state in a bar? What was that like? Describe it. Yeah, talk about it. Like you were describing yesterday. Well, yeah, and everything you do just seems to work. Everybody wants to meet you. And you look people, you look girls in the eyes and they get nervous instantly and then they want to talk to you. And there's just like something coming through you and you can't even explain what it is. And the next day you could be shit. You go out and suddenly you go out to talk to people and what happens? Yeah. And, and and you're out of flow state. You're thinking too much. You're analytical. So it's a state of beingness. Okay. And we're going to be getting into a little deeper into how to get into that, particularly in socialization. Now, who's gone out with your friends and it feels like time passes effortlessly as you guys laugh all night together? Who's had that experience? Raise your hand. That's you're going into a flow state with your friends. Now, the reason I'm particularly interested in flow state and socialization is because in my opinion, going out and meeting strangers in flow state is probably one of the best person, because flow state is one of the best personal growth tools to help you grow, to become more powerful, more confident in any area. Because when you're in flow state, you're learning like 500 times faster. You're, 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 you're getting 500% more done. It's ridiculous how much more you process and how fast you move. So when you're in flow state, everything speeds up. And they say that 10,000 hours to uh, expertise that Malcolm Gladwell talks about. Everybody know that? It takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in something in training. It cuts down drastically if you can get in flow state on a, on a daily basis a little bit. And then suddenly that 10,000 hours goes and you can become an expert really fast. So that ability to enter flow state, get into flow state is a huge skill. And the reason I love it in social skills is because when I'm writing, it's cool. When I'm doing sports, it's cool. Yes, people can judge me and they can say you did a good job. You didn't do a good job. My YouTube video can get clicks. But in social skills, you get immediate feedback. How people are responding to you when you walk up and say hi to them says a lot about where you're at in your body. It says a lot about your comfort level. It says a lot about your self-esteem. And you can take that into every part of your life. You can carry that into sales, into marketing, into business, into relationships, into uh, the health with your family, your relationships to your family. Who here, by, by doing the training with Fearless, learning about tension and stepping into tension and all this type of stuff, has radically shifted and, and releasing, radically shifted their life with their family? Raise their hand. Okay. And that's huge. You know, we hear that all the time. Um, and these, so the flow state to me in relating to other people is, to, is one of the best personal growth tools. And for men, going to meet women and talk to women and date and dating 
can be, if you literally are vulnerable and drop your guard and actually connect with women for real and let them in, is gonna grow you more than anything else in the world. Because they're gonna see everything. They're looking at you with a fine tooth comb, right? They're testing the shit out of you. And if you're, and they're, they're gonna, wherever they see an insecurity, they're gonna poke and they're gonna push. And if you go into flow state, you're gonna handle that stuff like, like a dream and she's gonna love it. You can come out of flow state, you're gonna get reactive. You're gonna get nervous, right? And so that's why flow state grows you so much. How many of you ladies actually test men, right? I asked you that the first day. I said, do you ever test a guy and, and poke at him to see what he's made of? And you were like, oh yeah, how do you know I do that? And I'm like, because every woman does that. Every feminine woman does that. Do you ladies do that? And if the guy seems kind of cocky when you meet him, but he's interesting, how hard will you test him? Harder, right? You want to poke at that. Just that the, like he's got a little armor here. I'm going to poke at that a little bit. He's a little like pulled back or he's, he's, I feel like he might be a player. I'm going to poke at that a little bit. 